Hi, everybody. Um, I am Elizabeth Alt, editor here at Duke University Press, and I am absolutely thrilled to be here today with Delinda Collier and Stephen Nelson uh, to discuss Delinda's new book, Media Primitivism, Technological Art in Africa. Uh, Delinda Collier, the author of this fabulous book, is Associate Professor of Art History, Theory, and Criticism and Interim Dean of Graduate Studies uh, at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. And Stephen Nelson is the Dean of the Center for Advanced Study in the Visual Arts at the National Gallery of Art in DC. Uh, with Kelly Jones, he co-edits the book series, The Visual Arts of Africa and Its Diasporas. Uh, and Media Primitivism is the second book to appear in this series. So thank you both so much uh, for coming together today to talk about this wonderful book um, and all of the great work that it's doing. Um, I, I kind of wanted to start off with just sort of talking about the title. Um, it's a little bit of a mouthful, but I think it really gets at some important work the book is doing. And I wonder if you could just tell us a little bit more about that. Oh, sure. Thank you. Thank you so much for hosting this. Um, thanks, Stephen, uh, for putting it on your list. I'm excited about that. And um, Elizabeth, you know, I've, I've expressed to you how grateful I am for, um, for the work you did for this book, really. Um, so media primitivism was a, a kind of a term that I fell onto when I was writing my first book. And so it doesn't even appear in my first book, but just as an, as an aside. And, but as I was writing it, I was like, okay, this is actually, it's, you know, catchy, um, but it's also in a way tr getting to what um, I'm trying to do, which is to braid together three fields, media theory and history, um, African art history and art history. And, and to get to kind of a fundamental understanding of mediation within all three of those fields. Um, so it's a play on primitivism as we understand it from early, the early avant-garde or the historical avant-garde, um, but really also to tie together the moment where these fields diverge and converge in really important ways. And so, so yes, it's, it's talking about the racism implied with primitivism, it's talking about the fascination with origins and substances and, you know, those things that we all kind of participate in at various points. Um, and, you know, to, to try to expand out that term primitivism, but also to use it to check um, the field of media, which, which has its own um, kind of unacknowledged history of primitivism. Yeah, this is this is terrific, and and it, it it provides such a great jumping off point. And and we, you know, thank you, Elizabeth, for bringing us together, and thank you, Delinda, for being here, and thank you for your book. I mean, wow. it, yeah, we were we were Kelly and I were thrilled to include it in this series because the you know the series, the Arts of Africa and its Diasporas, wants to look at new things and look at things we already know differently. And your book does all of that and more. And Thank so you. it was it was the perfect fit for for this series. And so we're we're thrilled about it. Um, but I love I, I, I want to pick up where where what on a couple of things that you just said. And the, the one th question I had that you answered was its relationship to your first book. Because I because I read your first book. And so right. so I was like, wait a minute, she's picking up on information and running with it. And, right. and sort of seeing how it plays out in places other than Angola and how it plays out at different moments, different places and different times. But what, a, what your book does, and I would love to sort of hear you talk a bit about this, is it, it, it brings together these three fields through specific objects. And so, and through mm -hmm. specific moments and through specific histories. And so, you know, Yellen is one of the one, you know, is a, a wonderful example because it not only has its own chapter, but then it comes back. It, it, it is, I mean, if there's a star in your book, it is this film, right? And, yeah. and, and, and rightly. Um, and so you, you go into the object and you look at, you look at indigenous ways of making sense out of the film. And then you expanded doing that sort of mix back and forth with, okay, this is how we've regarded film in Africa. This is how the film disrupts that idea. This is racist. You don't say that. Um, but, um, but how did you get to that rhythm, that to and fro, that, that characterizes the whole book? 
Yeah, you know, that's kind of the the rhythm that I was trying to also get at in the first book, which is to mm-hmm. to look at particular objects of media because they do in a way reside in a non-space. And and I think we'll get to that with the cover. I'm pointing mm-hmm. to the cover. Um, you know, that that media are supposedly outside of cultural specificity, mm-hmm. right? And so to toggle back and forth between medium and media as they're discussed mm-hmm. both in media theory, but also in art history, right? As if they're not culturally marked in some way. Uh, but then how um, African art history is always called upon to sort of declare its specificity and to, mm-hmm. to be very, um, you know, kind of um, tethered to place and space mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. culture in very specific ways. So I needed that toggling to happen, but it's very complicated to write it, you know, yeah, um, yeah. in a way that that doesn't seem like I am, you know, waffling or uh, not committing to any one mm. point of view. But instead, what I wanted to do was was use these objects and use mm-hmm. these artworks to sort of open that space up. Mm. Um, it's a space of, you know, the in-between space of media, and this is kind of how I try to frame it in introduction, is a space of correlation, and I'm stealing a term from Cécile Fromal, you know, where mm-hmm. she writes about um, Congo Christian yes. art early, yes. early as a space of mm-hmm. correlation, because it's a space where um, these objects arise in between cultures. Mm-hmm. And so you can't say that film is specific to Europe or to Africa right. or to, you right. know, um, but it is precisely mediating that space. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it's mediation, but it's also agency, and it's also ownership. And so, so in your hands, film film is African, <laughs> right? And you know, film is African, right? Your sound is and African. As you say, made Technologies it. Technologies are African. You yes. made people made it their their own thing. Um, but yeah, let's you know what. But but when you, I, I want to come back to what you just said and to the cover image and to this notion of a non-space. And I would love to hear more about that. And I want to throw in another term as you talk about it, and that's non-object. Because uh-huh. yeah, that's a particular object that you had to write about without being able to experience it. And possibly right. not even really being able to see much of it, right? Right. So I would yes. love to hear more. Yeah, so you know how it is to pick a cover image <laughs> and especially to pick a cover image when you work on African topics. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of, um, you know, there's just a lot of things that could go wrong in, in that choice. <laughs> um, yeah. So keeping that in mind and always mm-hmm. having to keep that in mind, I mm-hmm. think one of the things that I wanted the cover to do was, well, first of all, it's a, it's from the staging of an artwork that, that I devote a chapter to um, song of Solomon and, and, but what I found intriguing as an image, an image of a sound work, right, is that it's already gesturing to this impossibility of locating that specificity. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, as a media artwork, that could exist anywhere, you know, mm. but that media was designed precisely to do that. You know, the black box, the theater space, um, microphones, any, you know, the way that this whole mm-hmm. scene is arranged could be anywhere because those people who designed those, those media mm. um, made it that way, right? They didn't want it to be culturally marked. So, in a, you know, in a sense, now we can say, now, you know, part of the work that I'm doing is to say, well, that is actually a very coded cultural space of, of whiteness, of blackness, of, you know, the difference between the two. Mm. Um, and so, so that, so that's one aspect. The second aspect of the choice of the cover was that I wanted to downplay the visual. And I think, you know, mm-hmm. um, a good part of the book, half of the book or more is talking about sound and, um, and kind of downplaying ocular centrism as a method of European art. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so to talk about also that history of sound as being sort of romanticized as the original uh, mediation, right? Mm-hmm. And totally mm-hmm. impure without object, mm-hmm. you know, like I'm speaking and you hear mm-hmm. me. Um, and and that kind of pure vibration that a mm-hmm. lot of sound um, connoisseurs talk about. And so to use sound to really test also, test the ocular centrism of Western art, but also to 
um, speak about mediation again as mm -hmm. in terms of that desire for a primary mediation. Yeah, well, that I, that is so interesting because as you as you talk about that, you know, one of the you know one of the things we could say, right, or if, you know, from the field, as it were. Well, what about masquerade? Or what about the grio? Or what about these sort of like sound as oral transmission? And 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 your decision not to go there, except you know, in in part in in Yellen. Right. Right. Um, and even there, you're you're kind of upending this sort of francophone notion of African film as like a kind of 20th century modern griot, mm -hmm. which is how it's mm -hmm. been characterized. Yeah. So I'd love to sort of hear about your decision to sort of make those really provocative turns. Yeah, you know, and I stand on the shoulders of that literature. I want, yeah. you know. It's not as if I'm trying to undermine that idea of African film as 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 being African because of that notion of the grill. Mm, mm. I think that's all built in there. What what I'm also trying to add is is the fact that that's a content based pro mm. proposition. That's based on the content of yes. culture, yeah. the content of the film, um, and very rarely looks at the actual apparatus. Mm -hmm. with objects right, right right and so and Cisse was very uh Suleiman Cisse the filmmaker of Yelin was very clear mm -hmm. about um what he was doing in terms of that apparatus that he was putting the camera yeah. literally in the space of Africa knowing right. that the light would have different effects and qualities right. there um knowing that he could you know mm -hmm. that a lot of the film that was shipped over would be spoiled by the time it got there right. because of that right. so he's really mm -hmm. carefully mm -hmm. thinking of that in a very literal yeah. way so that's the mm -hmm. part that i wanted to account for in mm -hmm. addition to the content based proposition which happens to be usually how people identify africa and african art oh absolutely it's the absolutely it's the content mm -hmm. it's not the structure it's right. not it's not the sort of discursive field upon which it's playing you know especially if that field is not not purely african exactly <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah or the body of the artist you know or the body of the artist mm -hmm. right you know and so i mean what you've done and even that back and forth when you when you do that back and forth what i think of is that you're taking these these objects or sounds um and looking at them you're basically changing the lens yeah and so it's not gee i'm sort of leaving this behind so we can talk about yellen and nyama but then you're talking about about fetishism and other things yes. and it's not yeah. gee i've switched my topic it's wait a minute this film is doing this really interesting back and forth Right. Yes. And so it's it it is telling us we are it is telling us about itself, but it is telling us about the nature of film. Yes, exactly. And I love that. Yeah. And that film is it's just remarkable. Yeah. As you know, it's just yeah. because what it's doing is also I mean, it has the content proposition too, right. and this, you know, right. his citation of this old right. Malian, right. you know, um content. But like I said, um that mm -hmm. fascination with film itself. Yeah. 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 And so, um, and so along those lines, I mean, you, 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 you think about, I, I love how you think about Africa and it comes, you know, again, the, the intersection of the area studies and media studies and art history and African art history and, and anthropology yep. and ethnography. Mm -hmm. And what you, what comes out, what, what you produce is a whole bunch of Africa's. And so, you know, you've got Africa as location. Right? And it is this mm -hmm. place. It is this thing that we know. But also Africa as a set of propositions that travel yeah. the notion of Africa right? mm -hmm. and, and travel, you know, the, this sort of notion of the fetish. And so you've moved the fetish from being something that, you know, is African just to something that is us. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. And, um, and I would love to sort of Hear you talk a little bit about that process because you you talk about your intro as sort of heavy, and I don't think of it that way. Okay, I, I, that's good. I, I, or maybe it's because I'm a geek, but I'm, I'm <laughs> a geeked out on your intro. Um, but but it, it it sets the stage for all of these almost anachronistic you know, subjects, the fetish is, is, you know, I, at first I thought this is just anachronistic. This is just weird and interesting. And, but then it, it filters through the story that you tell. 
And I would love to love to hear you talk about how you weave that through through your narrative. Yeah. Well, it's probably not surprising that I wrote the introduction after the rest of the book. We all do. Um, yeah. <laughs> and and so what happened is that I was trying to make sense of what I had already written, mm-hmm. but also what I was understanding this artwork to be about. Mm. And and so to do that, I really felt like I had to go back and just rethink all of those fields again. Really, it began with me just thinking through, okay, what does, I know that all of these fields use medium in some way, that word, mm-hmm. that term, mm-hmm. um, they use it in radically different ways. Mm-hmm. And why is this? Why is this? Mm-hmm. And so where I wound up as I kind of, you know, went back through all the Mm -hmm. literature and all of those fields is to the fetish. It just all went back to the fetish. And so I know that that was a risky move. And I know that um, a lot of scholars are unwilling to kind of go there anymore, which, Mm -hmm. and I totally understand why. And so as a gesture, as part of that gesture of, of kind of renegotiating the fetish, I really felt like it had to be in order to desublimate racism, mm. number one, mm-hmm. that that had to be part of the project. And number two, to get it that exact moment where race, gender, um, the body, all of those things become um, kind of excised from discussions of art. Mm-hmm. And so when is that, when does that, you know, because in technology studies, there's just, I think, re- Recent literature has started to fix this, but for the longest mm-hmm. time, nature and technology were mm-hmm. seen as separate. That is right. race, right. gender, all of those things were separated out from discussions mm-hmm. and seen to be stable because of that, right? Like that's mm. the stuff that doesn't change. Technology mm. changes. And so what I wanted to do with looking at the fetish was say, actually, technology does this work of gendering and racializing. Right. And it does the work of making our bodies rendered into some, mm-hmm. you know, something. Um, so to recount that history, mm-hmm. but also within the terms of, you know, this this long um, history of contact that produces mm-hmm. media objects again mm-hmm. in spaces of correlation, but mm-hmm. spaces that become racialized and hierarchized. Yeah. yeah. And so that had to, for me, that was the the main. Mm-hmm. kind of goal that I had in terms of intervening into media history was that it had to stop pretending that it was this neutral, <laughs> this neutral <laughs> yeah. space, you know, yeah. that wasn't you know, doing this work of, mm-hmm. of racializing. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and it, it does the work of making it seem natural. And so, and it does a great yeah. job of it, doesn't it? And so, yeah, um, it really does. but, but, you know, going back to this sort of history of contact that, that you mentioned as, you know, as we've talked about, um, your book is deceptive. And so, and I want to talk about that because, you know, in, in the field and, you know, in, in part of it is field, right? And, and, and mm-hmm. so we see a book that, that pretends to modernism or modernity um, on the continent, and we think we're going to see a contemporary book, right? Mm-hmm. And, and your book actually is not what I would call a you know, sort of contemporary African art book with a capital C. Right. Mm-hmm. It, it, it traces really deep, really long histories of technology on the continent in different places at different moments. And so I was just so thrilled when, you know, we're talking about sound and recording in Egypt in the 1930s and 1940s. And even in South Africa, when you're talking about, you know, sound and, and Zulu cultures and things like mm-hmm. that, pushing it back. Um, yeah. And so I want to, I want to, I, I would love to hear you talk about that decision to really give us this sort of these really deep, specific histories yeah. of technology on, on the continent. Yeah, I thanks for noticing that. I think, yeah, you know how it is when <laughs> um, there seems to be in the field, and it's, I think, lessening now, but this real firewall between the contemporary and historical mm-hmm. in, when mm-hmm. we talk about African right. art. Right. Um, and it seems that, um, we don't know, or or there there was less of a developed mm-hmm. field to talk about the contemporary as having a history, and mm. it, maybe that's true in art history generally. That could be true, uh, but what I was wanting to do was well, it was like a provocation that I had for myself, which is what would a history of technological art 
look like if it weren't Western? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. what would it look like to write a really specific technology history in Africa? And of course, you know, as I worked back through all of those those um, histories and terms, that's impossible, mm -hmm. you know, mm. uh, but it's impossible just generally. It's impossible mm. for European history also. So so it is exactly that's, you know, that fetish, um, you know, object, but that that basic myth mm -hmm. or that mis mis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. perception of the object from the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. So that tracing back of the history, I think, had to happen in order for this book or this this proposition to be compelling at all. And mm -hmm. I do think that going forward, um, what I would love to mm -hmm. see in all of these fields of the contemporary, if, if we're going to mm -hmm. call it that, is this is this move to to look at well what what would that history look like mm -hmm. and even if it's not something that we consider like 100 percent you know locked down or correct or not you know mm -hmm. there are a lot of poetic gestures in that introduction mm -hmm. too it's it's like a melding together of a lot of um, mm -hmm. things over a long period of time but the gesture i think for me was really important to ground this in a way um that made sense and, and almost in a sense argued this as a field that's justified mm -hmm. you know? and not just like a, Oh, cute. This is, you know, video art in Zimbabwe or, you know, right, um, right. Mm -hmm. so novel or whatever. Just, mm -hmm. it, I, I exactly wanted to get away from that idea of novelty mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. like, this mm -hmm. has a history mm -hmm. um, and, and it's supposed to be there. It's indigenous. Mm -hmm. So then, so then does that, how did that change the terms for you? So thinking about getting away from novelty, right? Because novelty then means the only way we can talk about video in, in the Congo is to talk about it as a kind of mimicking of video in the West, which exactly. is what we feel. It's, I'm yep. completely losing the word. It's some... Um, derivative patronizing mm -hmm. yeah. is derivative so this derivative. is this is yeah. like a pale imitation of what we see in france so this yes. is a pale imitation of what we see in new york yeah right and so and yeah. and we have to judge it based on those terms right right and so if it doesn't look exactly the way that it does in paris or if it doesn't you know have the same gallery system as it does in new york uh, then it's just less quality less important we you know you and i know that mm -hmm. long history of of yeah. uh, publications and mm -hmm. you know scholarly <laughs> figures <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> making such declarations mm -hmm. but um yeah so that's exactly why to say this is this is the history and this is how it makes sense and this mm. is why it's important um of course part of that was me just picking <laughs> the art that i thought was important and and kind of building out that history for it mm -hmm. but i think that's exactly mm -hmm. That's exactly the gesture that I wanted was to was to say that uh, not only again not only that it belongs in Africa but it has a, mm -hmm. a history that's African mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. both in terms of that conceptual gesture that you talked about of mm -hmm. Africa but of it being there it just has been there all along you right. know right. you you said earlier I think before we were recording mm -hmm. you know five years after photography is invented it's in Africa. Yeah, you know, yeah. Not even exactly. five years, maybe five minutes. Yeah. I don't maybe know. Five minutes. <laughs> forty-eight. I, 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 I always told my students it was forty-eight hours, and yeah. I knew I was lying, but I mean, exactly. yeah. they got exactly. it exactly. Right. They got it. And mm -hmm. yeah, and they got it. And so it's not yeah. just that yeah. it got mm -hmm. sent over, but it's also that there was there, you know, there was a mm -hmm. development of that of that technology right. or that right. te technological thinking in Africa. Right. That it got used. Yeah. And it got used in ways that were not mimicry. And, and, right. and I think mm -hmm. that that's one of the, one of the wonderful takeaways from, from, your, from, your, from your study. Um, I do want to talk a bit about, um, and this is something that Elizabeth is interested in too, um, the role of matter and materiality. Okay. So mm -hmm. um, as your, your, your book discusses that kind of a model, um, and that kind of an orientation to art and technology that that related to some of the things we talked about already is mm -hmm. attuned to origins, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I would love to talk, you know, love to hear more about that orientation for you yeah. in your book. Um, yeah. I and think the kind of lifting it does. 
it does a lot yeah. and and there's yeah. a lot of ways that mm-hmm. that that word gets kind of taken up in and woven through i think one of the major themes of the book is mining and mineral mm-hmm. extraction mm-hmm. yes and that being of mm-hmm. course a foundational aspect of modernism in, in africa industrial modernism uh, but also so that orientation, which I kind of constantly come back to in the book of seeing Africa as a, an unformed natural resource right. in order, precisely in order mm-hmm. to exploit it. Right. Mm-hmm. And so matter and materiality in terms of how these artists understand that relationship mm-hmm. of extraction mm-hmm. and where they kind of sit within that history, mm-hmm. um, which is varied. You know, some artists mm-hmm. um, that I talk about are very much part of the exploitive side of that. And some are Mm. uh, part of the exploited part of that history. Um, And so they're able to kind of present that in different ways. So there's that aspect of kind of that history of material, the history of Africa Mm -hmm. as material, um, but then also kind of what what we were discussing earlier is the the literalness of some of these objects that that are being made and used. and the real marking out of the slippage between material or matter and the concepts or mm-hmm. the poeticisms or, you know, mm-hmm. and so um, there's also kind of a lengthy um, discussion in the introduction and throughout of, of metaphors yes. and, you know, extended uh, uses of, mm-hmm. of literary devices in mm. order to get precisely to that slippage yeah. of how something becomes something else mm. just like mining makes mm-hmm. you know this thing into this other thing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah well it, you you just reminded me of the 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 thread of allegory that yeah. runs throughout your mm-hmm. book which i right. love i love and um which is it which which you know is metaphor to be sure but it is it is a a a Particular, particularly inflected kind right. of metaphor, and yeah. so where, where, how is how was that working for you as you were as you were? As yeah, you were I mean, so that was also risky to me, like the fetish. It was, mm-hmm. It's risky to talk about allegory with mm. with um, within the history of the avant garde, which um, pretended to totally divorce itself from right. allegory right. because you had to be mm-hmm. literal, you know, right. um, mm. and. And so what I argue is not only did mm-hmm. allegory never stop <laughs> being fetishized in, in the historical or in Western art, mm-hmm. but also that, that that action of supplanting one thing with another thing is exactly that relationship of slippage mm-hmm. that allows artists to rewrite histories, step mm-hmm. into histories. Um, and so it is, and, and, and it can also be, weak and fetishistic and um you know be uh kind of used in in ways opposite of Mm -hmm. um of the ways that perhaps it was intended um so there's a lot of risk there's Mm -hmm. risk in me writing about Mm -hmm. it but there's also risk in the artist kind of employing Mm -hmm. that as a Mm -hmm. as a tactic um and so i you know i had to be willing also to just let that lie you know Mm -hmm. and let it be um, part of the whole story. Yeah. Well, you beautifully took up the challenge of Craig Owens. <laughs> you know, basically, you yeah. know, it was was talking about this whole allegorical right. impulse in in what he was calling postmodern art in the eighties. Exactly. And so, yeah. um, but um, but and and I I, I find that fascinating, and yeah. um, because because in in your book that is you know it attunes to content. And I think that we see that in Yellen. We see that in some of the other things, Song of Solomon. Um, but we, it's also structural. Mm-hmm. The yeah. five seconds of light. The five seconds of light is, is right. a complete allegory for so many things, right? Mm-hmm. And so it's, mm-hmm. it's, you know, about, you know, these different, you know, Malian cultural forms sort of mixing and coming together. It's about, yeah. you know, film. <laughs> right? and and as you say so beautifully it's about the kind of strand that you're creating and so i'm thinking about light and electricity and yama mm-hmm. right that mm-hmm. all come together in that moment and that you mm-hmm. that you, you you sort of take these threads and and you know sort of show us where they go and how they emanate and how they live together um yeah. sometimes incongruously and um and i love exactly. that that 
that that your tactic, right? Um, and so, but I would love for you because you you did mention this really early on, you know, like electricity. Mm-hmm. And I love what you said, you know, at different points about electricity and, and things that attune to electricity in addition to the thing itself. Yeah, yeah. That's probably exactly, mm-hmm. you know, so in addition to the fetish, mm-hmm. that's the other kind of thing that's doing a lot of work in the introduction because that's exactly the relationship that I want to talk mm-hmm. about is, is you know, we all, all of us right now are depending on electricity for nearly everything. Right. And, right. and so we have even, mm-hmm. you know, uh, movies and shows about what happens if that gets cut off. Like we're all just, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> Especially right now. Right, right. What <laughs> we all know mm-hmm. that that's there and that it's a threat if it's gone, but we have, there's no, there's very little in the way of a form that it takes that makes it more understandable for us. And, and I think that's what, um, John McNaughton and others who write about Yama mm-hmm. think, yeah. you know, they're trying to make this correlation, mm-hmm. but, but electricity and that kind of the moment it becomes more and more abstracted from, from, you know, mm-hmm. the, the universe, the earth, various materials, mm-hmm. um, the more we get this idea of mediation, mm-hmm. right. And, and kind of the more advanced electricity and its objects become, the more advanced our understanding of mediation. Mm-hmm. And so that was one of the other mm-hmm. kind of parallel um, histories mm-hmm. that I was trying to mm-hmm. write was, yeah. you know, where a lot of people notice that as soon as electricity becomes really uh, prominent in mm-hmm. our cultures in various ways, mm-hmm. uh, that's when media as communication becomes more important as a term. Mm-hmm. Like the the mm-hmm. understanding of media as, as a communicative mm-hmm. device instead of like an imitative, like a mm-hmm. painting. Mm-hmm. Um, it's when we get telephones, it's when we get yes. you know, radios yes. and, yeah. and things that actually are, are doing mediation on a much big, uh, much bigger, <laughs> um, a much larger scale mm-hmm. geographically. Mm. Um, and so, so it's definitely, um, a sub theme in the book. It comes yeah. into, again, mining in Africa, mm-hmm. um, was radically changed once electricity was introduced. Right. Right. You know, right. So, um, but it's, but it's very hard to talk about electricity. I really don't even know, you know, when I was trying to write about it, I was like, yeah. what is this? Yeah. You know? Like we all well, know we, what it is, but we don't know what it is. Or yeah. It's like works, fractions. Really. It's like yeah. fractions. You can't talk yeah. about it. You can't teach them. You right. can't, you know, I used to try to teach fractions to fifth graders and it was not easy because <laughs> exactly. they, well, because they were something we just knew. Mm-hmm. We just take it for granted. It's like the yeah. space where you live. Try to get someone to talk about where they live. Or the taste of salt. Or the taste right? of salt. Or, you know, it's like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and that's that's primitivism. You know, that's yeah, that's primitivism. primitivism. Yeah. Everything tastes like chicken. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I think is so just amazing about this mm. book is the way that you so deftly weave together these things that are so challenging yeah. to wrap your head around yeah. so that you've not only wrapped your own head around them, but you're presenting them and making all of these different connections to allow for sort of multiple points of a way into the conversation. Mm-hmm. And I think that's also what's really powerful mm-hmm. about the arc of the book as a whole um, with the different works that you bring in. I mean, I think yeah. we were sort of talking about this earlier too, but all of the different histories that you weave together, yeah. moving from mm-hmm. Mali to mm-hmm. Kenya, to South Africa, to Egypt, yeah. um, and really, really kind of diving into what each work means in its particular context. And I think yeah. it's just yeah. so powerful the way that you're able to do that. Um, I guess I was curious if you had any reflections about that kind of the research and writing process of the, all of that braiding yeah. to share. <laughs> Yeah, it was interesting. The research in a large way started mm-hmm. as I was finishing my first book. And, you know, I almost ditched my first book to write this one first. But Glad somebody, you didn't. <laughs> yeah, somebody warned me For so many that. reasons. Glad <laughs> for you the didn't. tenure clock specifically. Um, <laughs> thank you, Sean Smith. For, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, mm-hmm. so, so I, it was, it, I have always been interested in what's called new media art. That's been something that I've just long been interested in. And um, I thought that was the book you were going to write. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that was book I set out to write. 
Yeah. And then quickly realized I couldn't like, I couldn't use that term new because it was problematic. I, you know, and then, so each term that I started to pin down was, was just becoming more slippery, which is great. I love that, but it is hard to write. The research, I think just kind of went naturally, just some, some of it happened, uh, happenstance. Um, Mm -hmm. Some of it was deliberately researched. Um, A lot of the artists that I write about, I know and we're friends. Mm -hmm. And so um, kind of just keeping track of, of their work. Um, And then, yeah, some, some really just fun, like the best fun kind of type of research where you just happen upon something and, um, then you find out more about it. I think when I was really getting into material, that Wire magazine article that talks about Halim el in Egypt came out. And, mm. and it was just this big moment where everybody's like, oh my God, sound art or electronic music was invented in Egypt, not France, you know? <laughs> and um, well, the <laughs> comments on the YouTube video are very contentious. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> Yeah, that's not a done story. Yeah. Um, but I was like, well, yeah, what is this about? And mm-hmm. and why did he really, I mean, he never really thought it was that great until much, much later in his life mm-hmm. when he was, you know, seeing this other development mm-hmm. of, of a part mm-hmm. of his work. That, so, yeah, um, but there was a particular challenge, I think, that you're noticing, Elizabeth, in that all of these all of these scenes are very, very specific and have very yeah. specific histories. So yes. that part definitely was challenging. And I constantly felt a little bit like I was um, imposing in a field that I didn't belong in. Right. Because we which, have such which field, deep... which field, exactly. so many of them. <laughs> right? like, yeah. Like Congo studies, you know, there's mm-hmm. a huge literature and I yeah. feel like, yeah. well, you know, I, that's not my, you know, area um, and so I don't, you know, I can't really write about this in a way that's, that's, um, the most informed. Right. Um, so that, but that was part of the whole gesture for me was, you know, understanding our legacy, our field legacy of this really deep, um, thorough, um, and, and time-based research that's mm-hmm. called field research, you know, um, that definitely I didn't do for this book. Hmm. And what's the difference between that type of research, you know, um, which is also why I put that section in in the introduction about mm-hmm. field mm-hmm. research mm-hmm. and what we think that is. Well, and it was also, not- yeah. I mean, what you didn't say explicitly was that for so long, the at least in the United States, that sort of notion of field work was a badge of honor, too. Yeah. That Gold if you standard. didn't do it, <laughs> if you didn't do it, you weren't a real Africanist. Exactly. And I think we have yet to have that kind of thorough discussion about Mm -hmm. um, not just that and the implications of what we think a field is, you Mm -hmm. know, (laughs) Yes. Yes. but, um, but also what, you know, if we can't do that going forward, what will our field be? Mm -hmm. And that's the field of African art history. If we can't get grants to do this anymore, if we, uh, if nobody has the time to do that anymore, Mm -hmm which I think I came up in a time where that was radically changing. I was encouraged yes, to, you, you know, get out within six, five or six years. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so all kinds of things mm. are, are really quickly, quickly changing, including again, this apparatus that we're all operating on right, right now. Right. I can talk to anybody, you know, anywhere using this very same medium. So, uh, so what happens to a field in, in this kind of, situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think in a lot of ways to me too, it's part of what makes this sort of an exemplary, like second book project in some ways, Um, as, as in, you know, obviously it's a, it's a book that you have to have some pretty considerable expertise to write, but that you also have the confidence in the theorization, in the contribution to the Mm -hmm. field to Mm -hmm. not feel like, oh, well, I'm not an expert in Congo studies, so therefore I I just can't say anything about it. Exactly. I think in a lot of ways, to me, it seems like a model um, for Mm -hmm. this new time um, when when modes of gathering Mm -hmm. and modes of conducting research are radically shifting for Mm -hmm. a variety of reasons. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But also thinking about what are the requirements to have something interesting to say about something, right? You want to do your homework to be sure, but 
you know, no one's going to expect you to have covered every single thing in in Congo studies or to have lived exactly. there for a year. Well, and hopefully right. it will um, create mm-hmm. lots of interesting continued conversation <laughs> exactly. and debate. Mm-hmm. I hope so too. Exactly. I mean, honestly, yeah, the mm-hmm. field work aspect of that is something I definitely mm-hmm. want to keep talking. I want other people to talk about. Yeah. I want to, you know, what is it? Yeah. What does it mean to, to, to be so proximate to your subject? Mm-hmm. You know, do we want to be proximate to that or do we want to be far away from it mm-hmm. so we can see it in a different mm-hmm. way um, without, you know, being totally irresponsible, like you said, right, season, right. you know, knowing nothing about something. About. Right. But on the other hand, if I just were to walk up to this work and hear it, coldly, you know, what would I think? What would you think? And so, I mean, even with the caption, I was reading the caption for your cover and, and, and you know, the scene is Dublin. And I was like, what, wait, what? <laughs> and you're going to have people reading this book and everyone yeah. has to read this book, right? That, who, who say, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a great puzzle. It's a great puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. And I talked, you know, I talked about mm-hmm. this work, um, I think, um, for one of my tenure presentations and somebody asked me like, why are you writing about a white African? Yeah. So well, there's another, you know, another mm-hmm. question that will mm-hmm. come up, I think, and a, and, and a totally yeah. justified. One. Well, you've done, you've done all of these things that, you know, we, we will never say explicitly, but are kind of divides in the field. And so yep. one of them is North Africa, right? Yep. Egypt. One of them is writing about white South Africans <laughs> yep. while writing about other people and not confining mm-hmm. it to South Africa. And right. so, um, you no, know, it's really, I mean, it's incredible. Incredible. Well, I know you have somewhere to be at the hour, Delinda. So are there any <laughs> final thoughts, uh, any way, uh, things to say to wrap up questions from Steven? Just gratitude. Just thank you so much, both of you. Um, it's, it's a huge privilege to write a book and have people read it. It's just huge. Well, it's and such I'm a great that book. It's, done. it's such a great book. <laughs> and I can't wait to have everyone read it and review it. Yes. Here. Indeed. Please, yes. Please. Oh, wait, I have one too. Yeah, oh, we okay. like, right, right. got the pens we in go. them. Everyone has to read the yes. <laughs> It's dog-eared. I didn't write in it though. <laughs> oh. <Good. Thank> you. <laughs> and no post-its. I've learned no post-its in books. <laughs> Not an archival medium. The Not an archival right. medium. Right. <laughs> right. Well, thanks so much to you both. This was Thank really lovely. You. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Delinda. Thank you, Elizabeth. This was terrific. This was. Thank you so much, really. Thank you so much. And thanks everyone for watching.